up guys? This is my uh, Q School for PGA Tour Canada 2023 recap video. Uh, originally, I was just gonna post something to Facebook and Instagram, but I quickly realized that you can't really sum up last week in a, in a short clip. So decided it was a good time to reboot the YouTube channel. Anyways, I'm, I'm feeling good going into the event. Past year has been tough. Uh, but I'm trending in the right direction. I'm starting to feel really good about my game. There's been a lot of really positive signs. I got a new putting coach over the winter. I started with a new swing coach at the end of April. I started working with a new mental coach when I was down in Orlando over the winter. And overall, my body has been really healthy, except for just some tennis elbow that I've been dealing with. But that hadn't really gotten in the way of my game. Q School is at the same venue that I played at last year. I'm familiar with the course. I've done well by last year. And my longtime friend, mentor, mentor, and coach was going to be on the bag for me again. It looked like everything was kind of lining up nicely for me. Uh, this is the last qualifier for the 2023 PGA Tour Canada season. It's a four-day four day tournament with no cut, so you're guaranteed to play four rounds. The way it works is that if you win the qualifier, you're exempt into every event during the season. If you finish second through tenth, uh, you're exempt into the first half of the season. And then the tour does what they call a reshuffle, where they reshuffle the order based on your um, how many points you've, you've accrued in the first half, and then that determines the starts for the second half. After that, 10th through 30th gets uh, what's called conditional status, which technically doesn't guarantee you starts, um, but there are perks and advantages to having conditional status. So I fly out to Courtney the week before the event to prepare. Um, the trip doesn't get off to a great start because Air Canada loses my golf bag. You know, I'm thinking, okay, not the end of the world. I'll lose half a day of practice. My bag will show up tomorrow and then it's just business as usual. Next day, still no bag, um, but I do manage to talk to an Air Canada employee who was actually very helpful um, and tells me that my bag is in Vancouver and that it'll be on the first flight uh, to the Comox Valley Airport the following morning wake up the next morning, that flight's been canceled. So <laughs> my bag ends up coming in at 4.30 in the afternoon and I essentially just pick up the bag, go straight to the golf course and play a quick 18 before it gets dark. And it's all right, you know, feeling good, swing's been good, hit the ball well, not too much damage done, just lost some time, not the end of the world. Next day, go to the course, I work on my short game for a few hours. Uh, before playing nine holes as the course was closed that afternoon for a member event. Saturday morning, uh, we're three days before the event now. I'm getting up early to play an 8 a.m. shotgun, and as soon as I wake up, just the body just doesn't feel right. So I go through my normal uh, warm-up routine at the Airbnb. I go through my normal warm-up at the golf course, and I just can't move properly. It turns out an old neck injury that I've been dealing with had uh, decided it was time to make a comeback. It's an injury that I've been able to control and mitigate um, mainly by working out my back and strengthening my back. Um, but because of the tennis elbow, I haven't been able to pick up any weights for uh, an extended period of time at this point. So that Saturday morning was one of the most miserable practice rounds I've ever played in my life. I mean, I was just, I was in pain. Um, couldn't move, I couldn't hit the golf ball. Uh, and you know, what was supposed to be an afternoon of practice and preparation for the tournament turned into an afternoon of, you know, working with a chiropractor and a physiotherapist and trying to do everything I could to get my body back in shape for the event. So the next day I felt a little bit better, but I just didn't have my normal mobility, uh, but I wasn't in pain anymore, which was nice. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of lost all feel for my swing. And generally what happens when you go through something like this is your body wants to do what it's used to doing. And unfortunately what my body is still used to doing is all of the bad habits that me and my new swing coach have been trying to eradicate. It's, it's bad. It's really not good. Um, I mean, I was struggling to get driver airborne and when I did get it airborne, it was starting left and moving left. And as bad as driver was, three wood somehow was even worse. So fast forward to Monday. Um, this is the official practice round day. It's the day before the event. My caddy and I decide we're only playing nine. And that's basically just because we're trying to manage the load of my body as 
obviously we've still got a really big week ahead of us. Round one, uh, I'm in the afternoon wave. My group is teeing off on the par five, 10th hole. It's a tee that I would normally hit driver on. Uh, I've still struggled with driver during my warm up that day, but you know, I just kind of tell myself, you know, like the, the good swings are in you to get onto the tee, trust it, put a good swing on it. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything wasn't fine. Uh, wasn't that bad. I mean, I, I did hit it low left uh, into some trees that were probably less than 200 yards off the tee. Um, but I managed to get the ball back into position with my second shot. Unfortunately, the ball just rolled through the fairway and finished in the rough. Um, I'd hit a great wedge shot, but unfortunately misread the lie and caught a flyer, uh, which ended up in the back bunker. So now I'm back bunker to a flag on a back tier with everything running away from me. Um, I mean, there's, there's no chance of getting this ball close to the hole at all. So I play away from the flag because all I want to do is give myself a par putt here. Um, hit what I thought was a good bunker shot, just took a big kick forward, caught another slope, ended up down at the front of the green on a different tier about 50 feet away, and unfortunately three putted from there to make double bogey on the opening hole of the tournament. Um, obviously not the dream start you're looking for, but it's a long tournament and you know even though I made double I felt like I'd hit some pretty good shots in that hole and you know there's time to recover. So my ball striking continued to be pretty suspect. Um, but my putter got red hot uh, and I went on to birdie 12, 13, 15, 16, and 17 to make the turn at three under par. Uh, I birdied the first hole on the front nine, I bogeyed the second hole, and then I essentially just lag putted my way to seven straight pars. End of the first round, I'm three under par, I'm three shots off the lead, I'm in a tie for 10th place, and I'm feeling pretty good considering the situation. Round two was pretty similar to the first round. Uh, poor ball striking continued, but very solid putting. Uh, I made four birdies and uh, one bogey, and there was a ton more great lag putting in there. Uh, I'm six under after the first two rounds. I'm tied for sixth place. I'm still three shots off the lead with 36 holes to go. Um, I'm in a good position, but I know that I'm fortunate to be in that position given the ball striking. A driver at this point had become such a liability that we were seriously limiting how often we were hitting it and I mean, this meant I was even hitting irons off of three of the poor, three of the four par fives. So round three, um, front nine was really tough. The ball striking was only slightly worse than it had been the first two days, but the misses were just to the wrong spots. And uh, at the same time, my putter decided to go cold. I made one birdie, three bogeys, and a double bogey to make the turn at four over. I rallied really well in the back nine, uh, made three birdies in the first eight and uh, unfortunately bogeyed the 18th hole after yet another bad tee shot. Finished two over on the day, four under for the tournament. Unfortunately, I dropped from a tie for sixth place to a tie for 20th. Round four, uh, started on 10 for the final round. It's slightly colder and it rained periodically that day. We'd had fantastic weather earlier in the week. Um, I didn't play terribly on the front nine. I got a bad break in a bunker with a with a rock under my ball and uh, a really untimely three putt on the par 3 16th. Um, put me at two over after eight holes. I did birdie the 18th to get one back and really felt like I had momentum on my side uh, heading to the front nine. The first hole is a par five. I'd hit driver every day on that hole so far and I hadn't hit it well, but it had never gotten me in any trouble. And I was actually two under on that hole so far that week and I'd had good looks at birdie every day. Uh, so I think, why change the plan? You know, I've hit three misses on this tee, they've all worked out. Unfortunately, my miss on that tee shot was a really, really heavy hook. And that hook finished literally one foot out of bounds. I'd hit a provisional ball with my three iron, so we had to backtrack to that ball and ended up uh, making a pretty miraculous up and down to save bogey on the hole and limit the damage. I, I missed a good look at birdie on the second hole. I had a, a great lag putt par on the third hole. And then I birdied the tough par three fourth hole after hitting my shot to about 10 feet. I had a really good iron shot off the tee on the par five fifth hole, just playing for position, a good layup shot. And when I go to hit my wedge into the green, my, my right foot slips on the wet grass. I hit a little thin, flies over the green and I literally could not have missed it to a worse spot. 
I'm short-sighted, I'm in the fescue, I'm about six feet above the level of the putting surface and everything is sloping away from me. I hit uh, an incredible recovery shot, which finished about two and a half feet below the hole. And now I'm thinking, okay, no damage done. Let's keep pushing. We've still got four holes to play. Uh, I step up to hit the putt and I put a good stroke on it, hit a good putt, took off on line, and then it hit either a spike mark or a, a little pebble or some kind of imperfection on the green and bounced left off line and missed. And that was just an absolutely gut-wrenching moment. Unfortunately, I just made four pars coming in to finish at two over for the day, at two under total for the tournament. And after being in really good position to finish in the top 10, after the first two rounds, I end up finishing tied for 34th and missed conditional status by a single stroke. Still struggling to find words that describe uh, how I felt after after the round. I mean, as, as hard as I battled, I just wasn't able to overcome all the adversity that that week had thrown at me. It would have been easier if I had played healthy and missed by five shots, because uh, at least then you just know that you're not good enough. But to fight through everything that happened that week, from the lost bag to the injury, to miss by a single stroke is absolutely brutal. I uh, didn't sleep well that night. I haven't really slept well since, to be honest. It sucks because I know that I'm good enough. I know that I can compete, but golf is just a brutal and unforgiving game sometimes. Uh, I, I was supposed to go straight down to Victoria after the qualifier to, uh, to qualify for the first regular season event, but seeing as I was in so much pain and I'm essentially playing with only 12 of my 14 clubs, it just didn't make sense. Um, so I withdrew from the qualifier and got a flight home as soon as possible. The short-term goal at the moment is just to get my body back in game shape. I got to recover from the injury flare-up last week. I've got to get the tennis elbow dealt with once and for all so that I can continue doing the things that I need to do in my regular schedule to make sure that I stay injury-free. I won't be hitting any full swing shots for a little while, uh, at least until I feel like my body can get into the positions that I need it to be in. Uh, I will be rehearsing those movements at home without a club, just uh, in an effort to try and build up some muscle memory in the meantime. And I'll continue to work on my short game um, so that you know that stays sharp for me for the inevitable return to, uh, to the golf course. It's also gonna me, give me some time to assess what the rest of the summer is gonna look like now that I'm not gonna be playing on the PGA Tour Canada season. Either way, the end goal for 2023 was Corn Ferry Tour Q School, and that remains the focus for me. I also want to keep this YouTube channel going. I really do feel it's the best way to connect with you guys and tell my story going forward. But I do want to hear from you guys. You know, comment below. Let me know what do you want to see from the channel. Do you want to see course vlogs, practice vlogs, more storytelling like this, um, combination of all of the above? Is there something you want to see that I haven't thought of? Uh, really appreciate the feedback. So just let me know what you're thinking. Anyways, long story short, last week was a big blow to my season. I'm, I'm determined that I'm gonna bounce back uh, better and stronger than I ever have been. Um, this is not the end. Um, I'm going to continue fighting to reach my potential and my long-term goals. I do wanna send a big thank you out to everyone who followed along last week and sent words of encouragement throughout the week. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Uh, congratulations to the Quebecers who did obtain status last week. Raoul Manal finished inside the top 10, so he's in for at least the first half of the season. Uh, Etienne Bro and Marcel Olivier Place both finished in a tie for 14th. Um, so they have conditional status, but uh, that should be enough to get them into probably most of the events in the first half of the year. And then it's really up to them just to go get some results and, and, uh, and get into that second half of the season. I'm happy for you boys. Go get it, go make us proud. That's all for now. Uh, I'll be back shortly with another video, a uh, bit of a status update on as to how the recovery is going um, and my progress and what my next events will likely be. Um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.